views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. When was the last time you did something that would take you closer to a life that you'd love? Get answers to this and many other life-changing questions on Grow Your Soul Radio. Ignite your inner magic and learn the art of life mastery with Jane Matanga. Jane will unlock and help you reclaim the magic in your life. Take an inspiring journey with Jane as you receive guidance toward the path of your greatest dreams and desires as she helps you reach success as you make powerful changes that will get you back on track and keep you there. Discover insightful tools, world wisdoms, and exercises in this hit call-in show. Transform and awaken your inner light right now on Grow Your Soul Radio. Oh my goodness, we have got a good one for everybody out there today. Yep, I'm Dr. Pat, and I get to do this great show with Jane Matanga, Grow Your Soul Radio, Ignite Your Inner Magic. Today we have a very special guest joining us on the show, Keiko Broyles, and we're going to be talking about how to create more magic in your life. And the reason that this is exciting is because I think sometimes we look at our lives and we think about whether or not the thrill is gone. Mm-hmm. Has the thrill gone? And we have to ask ourselves the question is, well, if the gr- thrill was here and now it's gone, you know, what happened Welcome to, to the it? Hit show. Did the thrill turn into the grill or maybe more like the chill? Uh, Benny, 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 here we go. All right. All right. So what I'm trying to say is this, you know, when we look at ourselves, we seem to imagine that living a life that is so filled with the energy and the creativity of magic, you know, that beauty in itself is for somebody else. But today, That's not this show. Today is the show where we play with all possibilities, where we open up to what is, where we step out and we go beyond wondering, but join in in the action that's required to live an amazing life. For those of you out there, you know who Jane is, but let me just remind you, you know, for over three decades, she has worked with businesses, groups, individuals. She's somebody that understands how to walk in multiple planes, multiple platforms, how to be a successful business person, as well as an intuitive, a fascinating coach, somebody that knows about life mastery and the art of living well. And when you put that all together, what you have is a beautiful blend, a mixture of formula for what does it mean to manifest instantly in our lives because when we hold the energy of spirituality and intuition we also have to get up in the morning and put one foot in front of the other and that's what she helps us with also joining us here today is keiko psychic spiritual medium multiple encounters with the spiritual word world you've heard her talk before plugged in completely to building the energy of magic so that magic in our lives isn't just for a handful of people. It's the way that we wake up in the morning and we go to bed at night, fully embracing and owning in ourselves. Great show. Are y'all ready for it? Welcome, everybody. Yeah, I want to introduce Keiko just a little further. Um, you know, Keiko has touched the lives of so many um, people. And um, her channel messages are filled with love and light and healing and compassion. And there's magic in that, that, that creates even more magic in our lives. So Keiko has an uncanny ability to connect with the spiritual realm. And uh, she shares personalized messages that have the power to heal the soul. And, um, so glad that you're joining us today for uh, this special show as we talk about how to create more magic in our lives. And there's so many ways to do that. 
And uh, I'm so glad to be here with my wonderful dear friend and colleague. And um, she's going to talk to us a little bit later and, and, and during uh, some of our uh, mutual uh, discussions together on spiritual connections and how that's possible in every moment. So, yeah. 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 Keiko, it's great to have you. No, thank you so much for having me. I know I'm so honored and uh, to share this airtime and uh, the space with you both. And uh, nothing happened, you know, for coincidence. Everything has this serendipity, wonderful series of event that we were guided and, and to be here today. And, and uh, I try not to uh, worry or attach myself to the outcome of this messaging. It's the fact that we are here, and then as long as our intention is pure, and then all of our intention is the same, that we wanted to help people and then heal people, and then that's just good enough. But mm -hmm. I just want to, again, wanted to thank you both so much, and Jane, you are always just a wonderful, um, mm -hmm. dear friend to me also, and an absolutely naturally, just a natural leader. And so again, I'm very honored to be part of this show today. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, let's talk about this from, you know, the energy that we get to create as you both have just done. Right. Um, you know, let's talk about the word. Wow. Uh, I, I had a friend that used to have an acronym for everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Everything was an acronym. It was very cool. Right. Um, but sometimes they would like change. Like on one day, wow would mean one thing, but the next day it would mean another. Let's mm -hmm. talk about the word wow, but I want to talk about it from a from a sense of pure, authentic energy, mm -hmm. the wow, the energy of wow, and what that means in our lives. You know, when were we dazzled, you know, when were we out there in the world and how can we remember what that wow was? Have you ever thought about that, Jane? Let's talk about wow. So wow to me is witnessing a beautiful sunset or watching an amazing magical performance or something that took your breath away, whether it's your uh, children in a beautiful moment of hysterical laughter or uh, something that they're doing that just uh, really takes your breath away. I mean, that's where magic is in your life. I, I think where we get lost is when you know we get so conditioned to as adults and and we start getting into you know we accumulate all these layers of conditioning and we try to fit in to society and to our jobs and there's so many expectations for us in the world and um when this happens it takes our curiosity away and it takes our sense of wonder and that's what wow is to me it's wonder you know mm -hmm. So what we're doing today is talking about magic, my favorite topic, and how we can kind of peel back the layers that have been diminished and uh, replace the skepticism and that seriousness with our childlike innate ability to go back to those places of wonder mm -hmm. and magic. So, I mean, that's yeah. what wow is for me. Yeah. You know, I got to ask a question of both of you around this. I, I, we, we're more than a radio uh, organization. People have known us for 15 years. That's how we started out. Uh, but one of the things we've done is we've really stayed on the pulse of what our you clients really want so happy, to help them launch their vision, their dreams, their wow, to launch their wow, right? And the question that I would love to ask each of you is uh, what you believe gets in the way of activating our magic wands. I love magic. You can tell, right? I mean, just look at the background over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what gets in the way? What gets in the way, Jane, you know, Keiko, of us owning our wow? And, and, and this is a two-part question because it's going to really lead to whether or not we believe that magic belongs to us, right? Mm -hmm. Or is it for those other 1%? You know, what do you believe stops us from fully experiencing our wow and then sharing our wow with mm -hmm. the now? It's we don't allow ourselves to look for 
and open up to everyday magic in our lives. We get caught up with all the layers of our life and we don't stop, you know, when we're rushing for the cup of coffee to make the train or get in the car and be on our schedule to get to work on time. You know, our pace is so hectic, it's numbing. You know, it, it, it's a numbing process and it, and it really desensitizes us uh, to a lot of energies around us. And, and Keiko can talk to you about energy. Uh, she um, feels that all the time with the, our loved ones that she connects with. Uh, but we get caught up in, in that. And that's what numbs us. And we forget to go back to that childlike state, you know, that beginner's mind that all the children have that we know, um, you know, so, you know, it wonder, it's that sense of wonder, you know, when an artist does a painting, they have that sense of wonder, um, you know, when you embrace uh, your loved ones, that's wonder, um, just not getting caught up into the day-to-day challenges um, and, and looking for it. You know, when you find beauty, you'll find it. I know Keiko has some thoughts on that too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I mean, what you're saying is we got to allow the wow. Got to allow the wow. To allow the wow in the now. In Keiko, the now. what do you think? Yes, uh, I just wanted to, just to kind of piggyback on that, what Jane just said to, to add a little bit more to that. And then I, I would say uh, it's, it is definitely easier to say that, the, you know, than done. And, but I honestly think is that we humans, you know, we have this two sides of us. One is that the human side of us, which is really driven by the ego. You know, we all have it. It doesn't matter what we do for a living, even though we spend hours meditating, as long as we are human, we have this ego within us. So that makes us who we are. And then also that our, you know, true self, the true soul, which is the, the, the in charge of feeling. So that in, to me, in order for uh, us to make that wow moment possible, whether it's a big wow or very subtlety of, you know, joy and an embracement. But we have to be always aware that there is like a little bit like a gremlins you know, the, that little like a, like a barking dog, I sometimes call it, that telling us that, no, you're not good enough. No, that's not appropriate. You know, all these things is coming into us, which is the doubt, driven by the doubt and then the fear. So once you acknowledge it, you know, and then, then you can kind of manage the side of you, you know, it's impossible to shut that down completely. But as long as you just manage that, and then embrace and bring it out, the feelings, which is really pure, that's the way the childlike feeling, that finding joy in everything. Mm. And then once, you, once you're able to do it, then I think it's finding the wow moment mm. would be much easier. Yeah. You know, Jane, one of the things you wrote, and I'd love for you to talk about this. Thank you, Keiko, because this is, I think, what you're talking about. I think you wrote this. You wrote, experiencing magic is like having a surge of electrical current run through your body. In an instant, our life can go from black and white to technicolor. Our intuition, creativity, and ability to sense the underlying wisdom that exists below the surface of everyday living helps us in making life more enjoyable. You know, I'm struck by that in a a number of different ways. And, you know, I'm starting to really look at things and break them down. Um, Even some of the things that happen in our lives that aren't only, uh, uh, that aren't always rainbows and unicorns, but those things that have happened to us in our lives, which allow for our hearts to become more fully open. And it's like you, you wrote about, it could be a movie. It could be something that happens in our lives personally. It could be an aspiration. Uh, But you talk about this being very personal. And I would love for you to share more about what you've discovered about magic and how to facilitate it. You know, um, one of the ways to facilitate magic is starting to ask us questions, you know, um, because we have so many, we put, you know, none of us know what our limits are, you know, and basically we don't have any limits except for the ones we put on ourselves. So 
because we don't know our limits, um, anything that we think is a limit is, is something that we create in our mindset. So that's a self-limiting belief. So how do we change that? We, you know, you have to start asking the questions and uncovering and peeling back the layers that are hidden there when you're not asking them and you're not opening up to your, your innate sense of wonder and that childlike ability that we all have. That's our, that's our inner core. That's who we are. Joy is, is how we're meant to live our life. So questioning those beliefs that we've chosen for ourselves. So, so why? do we allow ourselves to um, do things when we know an, another outcome is better? You know, why do we follow somebody's advice when we get that little feeling in our, in our sense and our, in the pit of our stomach where we know that's not our truth. And so when we ask these questions and we, that are hidden, that lurk behind our shadows, you know, we shed light on that and we dare to ask those questions uh, why are we doing the things the way we are, the way other people tell us to? Um, that's when you start to, to see the magic and you start to awaken and you start um, just being more alive and, and doors start to open and you start to see things. You know, when you look for the magic, you find it. You know, it sounds really simple, but, you know, when you wonder like a child, you know, they're open to everything. They don't put limits on themselves. They think they can do anything and, and we can. That's our innate, our, that's our innate self. So that's how you start to open the door. You know, you start by embracing, you know, and looking at everything with wonder and that Zen-like mind and, and the beginner's mind where you just, you don't have an opinion you're an observer and you connect to that. You connect to that beauty, you know, in, in life and everything, you know, you have to be, this is a practice. This is a, you know, a practice in life, you know, and uh, how to connect and open up to that. You know, it's sort of like, and Kate, I'll talk to you about some of these things too, about, you know, when people put you through a meditation you know, and you close your eyes and you can visualize that moment in your life or many moments in your life when you were like ecstatically happy. Totally. You, you know, mm -hmm. and you were enchanted and you, in your mind's eye, you see that moment, whether you were dancing with your father at a wedding, whether you were with your soulmate or you discovered your soulmate or so many moments in our lives are filled with magic, but we forget so it's, it's staying in touch with that in our mind's mm -hmm. eye and in our environment and in our surroundings mm -hmm. and being diligent about noticing and opening up to all of that and enjoying it all. Even in those moments when we're challenged that are, are difficult, we can find beauty. You know, it's just looking for that. Yeah. And so I I want to ask you both this question and I want to go to Keiko if we could, Jane, because what you're touching upon Boy, I got to tell you, <laughs> you know, the latest article that just came out about uh, what was that? I'm, 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 I'm going to paraphrase because I don't remember the technical article name. The bottom line was that even if you go out to a $500 dinner, you cannot put your phone away. Mm -hmm. It was like that. It was like that. It was like it was something like that. But here's what I want to ask both of you, because I think, Jane, what you're talking about is the essence of humanity right now. You know, I was sitting on the couch last night and Linda's staying with me. She'll be going back home uh, in, uh, I don't know, in a week, let's say. I think it's a week now. And Linda's been my friend since 1972, right? That's a lot of years. For those of you out there, you're thinking that's it's not quite 100 years ago, but I'm just saying, right? <laughs> I, 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 Jessica's like, oh, man, that's like a long time. Um, <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm looking at Linda and I had this moment last night on the couch, by the way, uh, as we're mindlessly playing a little word game. And here's what happened. I had such a moment of appreciation for this person in my life that it brought me to tears 
because mm -hmm. if you would have known me in my life and who I was when I was younger, there's no possible algorithm that I should be here talking with you about opening up the heart, spirituality, connecting with love. That wasn't me as a kid. It wasn't me. I was homeless at 17. My mom committed suicide when I was six. I was one of those kids that when they wrote in your little book, you know how they write your book, like in your junior high school, they write stuff in your book. Mm -hmm. uh, and when they would, they write stuff in your book, they're writing, we're going to pray that you don't end up behind bars for the rest of your life. But I had that moment that you're talking about, Jane. And isn't it funny? Every time you do a show like this, I have these moments. But it's indescribable. Can you both address this feeling from a spiritual perspective? Because I think we all have that ability. I think yeah. Keiko can speak to that. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, definitely sounds like a path. You've been through a lot when you're young. And as hard as hard as as it was, I truly believe that those things are part of the plan for your life. You mm -hmm. know, it really made you who you are today. And then therefore you understand you have this empathy now understand when the people are around you might be going through the similar situation and it's so important so that once you embrace everything that happened in your life which you, you already have been doing that it just like it just becomes something so-called magic like jane's saying you know and uh you know i totally agree with you about the, it's about the human you know like humanity now you know, we, we all kind of remember to kind of back to the basics, you know, instead of looking down on the phone, maybe we should phone call them people, you know, um, and it's it just that uh, energetically, uh, definitely the laws of attraction where, you know, we all have to be mindful of what we think of ourselves. So that I always tell my clients that who comes to see me about, well, I don't know, you know, if I can be successful at this or that or my job interview coming up. And I honestly just have them close their eyes and then just quiet their mind. And can you see yourself right now doing that job? If you can't see it even for little milliseconds, then it would happen. So you know, so you have to be, make sure that you, your uh, thoughts are always positive and, uh, and uh, when you are sending out the energy to the universe, you would more likely get that back to you, you know. So, Jane, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I think, Jane, one of the things you talk about is the visualization to close your eyes and take yourself mm -hmm. back. I mean, you do that so beautifully to remind us mm -hmm. that this is not an illusion, you know, our ability to experience magic is not a cosmic joke. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It really isn't. I mean, I think when we realize that we're byproducts of all these incredible forces that are orchestrated in the universe and by us, um, we can channel that power. And, you know, um, Pat, I think you're a really good example of that. You, I mean, you speak of your past. We all have a past. We all have a dark side. We all have a story, but that, you know, we have a choice whether, and you talked a little bit about that. You touched on that. We have a choice of whether we're going to stay in that dark place or whether we're going to realize the power of the magic that we have inside of us because we're light and right. that's who we are. And we all have special gifts that we, you know, we're not here by accident. You know, we, we, wanted to be here in this special time on this planet and we're part of what's moving everything. So when we make the choice not to stay in darkness and to choose to see the beauty in that moment, even when it's dark and challenging to know that life and the universe and the forces and our innate ability to be and see our own light in the world and give our own light in the world. That's when the magic keep showing up. So, you know, it's really that sense of wonder and also the empowerment. And that's what happened with, you know, the, the darkness and the dark night of the soul, which is what 
a lot of books and enlightened writers talk about, you know, when that happens, you know, that either fires you up or you, or you decide that you are, you're not going to take the leap off the cliff. And that's a choice we all have to make. And, and the fact that you have TTR today, Transformation Talk Radio, you made the leap and we all have that choice. We can all make the leap and question, you know, what doors can I open today? You know, uh, what's moving everything? What, what makes me come alive? And you discovered that when you started mm-hmm. Transformation Talk Radio. And that's how, you know, you kept in touch with your magic, even through those deeply questioning kind of darker times. But it fueled you. And so, you know, we yeah. all have, have that. And if we choose it to, to light us up and give our gift to the world and that we believe and we can go there, and line up with that, that's magic, mm. you know? And well, I would say just um, really embrace the shadow side of us, you know, shadow side of you, because there is, there has to be the shadow side to the light side. It cannot be just one side, you know, like anything, you know, there's a positive and negative, there's a light and darkness. And then honestly, uh, we all, like Jane said, we all have that shadow side of us. We may not always share it. Could it be our childhood? You know, we all have those history. And um, But instead of like stuck in that moment and being resentful about it, and, you know, life really truly begins and started to understand that I am pure for the reason. All these things happen to make me the person who I am, you know, and I do talk to people who said, you actually kind of get upset if I would say something like, you know, you realize that you chose to be here. You chose your parents. And then they're like, Julie no, Randy. I would never choose my parents like that. You know, I get those a lot. But now the physical part of you may not, the you know, human side, but the soul chose your parents because that's the part of the learning. It's just a one of the lessons, many, many lessons that you go through so that our soul will evolve and mature. And then for those of people who are lucky enough to really know that soul, the living within you, then you're going to truly start to feel, which is you know, almost like living the spirit-guided life, which makes the, really the key to the, the happier life. You know, but it's all connected. It's not just the one thing. Well, you know, one of the things we are going to talk about when we come back, because that's what you both do so beautifully, is look at helping other people um, really move forward in that space and that energy of not just seeing their wow, but experiencing it. You know, the idea of living life without limits. You know, it's funny that we're talking about this because I was talking with someone the other day about this and you know, they're telling me, they're saying, you, you know, look, Pat, you, you know, you should write a book about this. So you should write a book about that. And one of the things I was really struck by is asking myself the question, how intelligent do I feel about operating in the world of possibilities? What's my possibility quotient, my possibility IQ? You know, how do I operate in that world? And what are the benefits to doing that? When we come back, We're going to talk with both Jane and Keiko about this idea of wonder and wonder as much as you dare. Before we go to break, can, can you, can each of you let folks know how they can find out more about you? Because I'll tell you, I'm not here because I did this alone. I've got a lot of angels and a lot of help. Uh, Keiko. um, Oh, yeah. Give them the contact information. Yes. Hi, thank you, Jane. Uh, I can be found on my website, keikomedium.com. So the Keiko is spelled as like a K-E-I-K-O, medium.com. And uh, also that I can be reached, uh, uh, my uh, email is the uh, keiko at keikomedium.com. So yes, you can just uh, look at my profile and my history and I uh, hope to uh, uh, you know connect with you at some point. Thanks, Jane. Oh, my God. And Jane, how about you? They can um, uh, look at my website at uh, enlightened-path.com 
or they can contact me through info at enlightened-path.com. All right, we're going to take a short break. We come back, get ready, everybody. Get your wonder on. When we come back, we're going to talk about wonder, the word wonder. What does it mean? And how is it the energy of wonder can either get us to where we really want to go or not? Let's take a short break, everybody. We'll be right back. A word of caution, if you prefer the status quo and you are not interested in improving every aspect of your life, this book will trigger the shift out of you. The Truth is Funny, Shift Happens is available now. Author Colette Steffen brings the powerful knowledge and life-changing energy and empowerment from the radio airwaves to the pages of her new book. To get your copy in paperback or ebook, visit thetruthisfunny.com today. Tune in to Knowledge Book Radio with host Marge Potasic each Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Through many experiences, Marge was led to the Knowledge Book, a gift to humanity in its transition to the Golden Age, and it provided the truth and the answers. She now shares information from the Knowledge Book with you each week on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more information, visit USA.TheKnowledgeBook.net. Is traditional medicine not working for you? Do you still feel as if your health isn't 100%? Here at the Holistic Medical Center, Dr. Nushin Darvish and the qualified staff look through the dimensions of wellness and start a healing plan prioritized to your needs. Our physicians assess the whole you until complete health is achieved. Get the help you need by visiting drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Have you lost a loved one and would desperately love a sign to prove that they are okay? Here's a tip for you. Be curious. Keep an open mind about everything. The proof will come from the most unlikely places. The messages promise to challenge your current beliefs in what you've been taught. Accept and appreciate all, no matter where they come from. I'm Angie Corbett Kuiper. I would love for you to share your signs from beyond on my closed Facebook page, Beyond Grief. Hi, I'm Jane Matanga with Grow Your Soul Radio. Life is full of challenges and surprises. Your guidance is to move with the current, for it is in resisting the flow that creates problems. Ask your angels to help you open up your mind and heart to new ideas and fresh options. When you accept the possibility that there are other ways, previously unseen doorways, will be open to you and you will move easily through change. There is a solution to every problem. So look at things with eyes of love and expectation. Then your life force will flow freely through you. You will feel healthy and alive and will be able to access the necessary resources and wisdom within yourself to help you through change. I'd love to take this journey with you. Visit my website, enlightened-path.com so we can explore all that is possible. Yes, he is. Hey, everybody, welcome back. We are taking calls and we're here to make sure that you all get what it is you need to get, the guidance you need to get. We got two of the best here today. And that's why we love doing this. And some of you have already called into the show, 1-800-930-2819. How to Create More Magic in Your Life with Keiko Broyles, as well as the most amazing Jane Matanga. And, you know, this is Grow Your Soul Radio. We are taking your calls. I'm not exactly sure um, what's going to evolve through this. You may get some insight from both Jane, from both Keiko. Uh, But before we go to the phones and we talk more about wonder, uh, again, Shane, Keiko, please tell people how they can work with you directly. All right. Thank you. So uh, I can be found, I found um, uh, my website, the keikomedium.com, the K-E-I-K-O medium.com. Um, and uh, over there, you can look at my schedule. You can schedule the appointment with me. And I do do a Skype session as well. Uh, uh, also teach classes and uh, I do some like the uh, demonstration mediumship events that are coming up uh, at the end of this month on March 23rd. You can find all this information right on my website. 
I love that chain. And um, you can reach me at enlightened-path.com or write me at info at enlightened-path.com. I can work with you on Zoom, in person, or on the phone. And uh, I would be delighted to help you with anything and everything you need. I love it. And Mr. Benny, by the way, the B, I call him Mr. B. He Mm -hmm. is gathering up our callers that are calling in (laughs) because I think they want some insight from you both. And he'll just just text me a little message. Uh, Isn't that amazing? I already did that there, Pat. Oh, you did? Yeah, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready. I, I, I'm re- if Benny's ready, I'm ready. Let's go, Mr. All right, B. Let's take Carrie calling in from California. Hi, Carrie. Hi. Thank you for taking my call. Hi, <laughs> Carrie. How can, can we you help me? you today? Uh, yes. Hi. I wanted to see how I could improve a very turbulent relationship with my mother-in-law. Um, mm-hmm. I have uh, pretty much, you know, we've we've had really rough moments. And um, I, every time I kind of want to get over it and everything, there's always uh, something else that uh, she does that just really irks me. And then um, try not to remember and everything's, you know, fine. But then, you know, I get that little memory of it and then it's like irks me again. And it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know if I'm ever going to have a good relationship with her, unfortunately. Never say never. Uh, yeah. let, me, let me answer that question. Yeah, um, boy. Thanks, Jane, for that never say never thing, Never boy. say never. Um, yeah. Don't put that into your head. That's a limiting belief. It, it, well, how you have to handle this is that it, you, 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 what we need to understand is that it's okay when people don't respond in the way that we want them to. Because when they don't, uh, and we go to that place, that's judgment. And you you never can really be sure what is going on, even if they're a mother-in-law or someone really close to you, what's going on in their life, how they experience life in different aspects of their life, how they were treated as children or all the other dimensions which make them make the choices that make them who they are. So, you know, the thing that we have the control over is our thoughts, right? So if Mm -hmm. you want to maintain your happiness and your joy in any situation, what's the one thing, the one secret that you can do above anything else that can change and make kind of a situation that's tough, dark, or challenging, even somewhat enjoyable, even in that moment. The answer to that question is you can change your thoughts. So change your thought and, and hit that kind of mental pause. Feel the feeling. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to feel it because you need to get in touch with that and be honest with it. Feel the feeling. Notice. Breathe. Ask to be open. And then feel the sensations in your body and ask yourself in that moment, what can I be? become or do in this moment right now to get joy out of my life. And when we start doing that with every scenario that causes us pain or a moment of discomfort or challenge, we start getting really good at making the shift, you know, because the end goal, you know, all that stuff belongs to her. It doesn't belong to you unless you choose to take it in. When you take it in, it's yours. Okay, so if I give you a smelly skunk, what what would you do? Would you take it? No. Okay. <laughs> right that's answer. Right answer. <laughs> so that's what she's doing when she's talking to you and giving you that information. She's giving you her smelly skunk, whatever that is. So mm-hmm. you have a choice, mm-hmm. don't, don't take that in. That's not yours. Mm-hmm. So you change the subject, you know, talk about something that's enjoyable or something that you can connect on and change the focus. And you do that every single time. And you get really good at not staying in that place and focusing on what is making you unhappy. You're switching and you're focusing on what is making you happy. Mm -hmm. And that's how you have a better relationship. That doesn't mean you have to spend tons of time with someone who who doesn't create joy in your life, but because of the relationship, 
there is, um, you know, you want to have a, is you want to have as much joy in that relationship as you can. And since you are connected in that way, it serves your highest but good. I really don't. <laughs> I really don't. I don't desire any anything from that relationship. Well, can you know? I can I interject? Like, and I, can you I know, interject? I don't even want to. Sure, sure. Yeah. Let me tell you what I think is 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 most important that I hear you that you desire. What I hear that you desire is something that for most of my life, I too desired it. And that's peace, inner peace. The thing that goes on on the inside that brings you to such a place of knowing and confidence and wholeness, that place inside of you that can't be touched by a mother-in-law, a brother-in-law, a skunk, a squirrel, that place, that place of peace. See, we don't think we desire things in relationships we have with people, but we do. Sometimes we simply desire for the pain of that relationship to go away. And in order for that to happen, we cannot deny that there is an entity, a body, a thing on the outside of us that's getting to us. Now, look, I got to tell you how thick I was that uh, many years ago, right, when I was like almost at the same place you are, except I got to tell you, it wasn't just a mother-in-law. It was everybody on the planet was causing me problems. You understand? Like everybody, Mm -hmm. Like, like that. Like I would wake up and I would wake up and I would say, oh my gosh, I don't even understand how Nixon got elected. I mean, honestly, I would just go off. (laughs) It was ridiculous. It was like every day. Ask Linda. She'll tell you. She'll tell you. But they, Fast I was forward to 2019. A, oh, my God. Um, and I was handed a anyway. book. Uh, somebody at the workplace gave me a book. Now, here I am, this young person working for the phone company in a room with 50 people. Do you think people wanted to hear from me? No. They handed me a book. Here's what the book was called. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. And they handed me a quote from the book. And the book by Victor, the quote was this, things on the outside world can take everything away from you. People on the outside world can take everything away from you. Every dime you've ever earned, every piece of clothing you've ever had, every friend you thought you may want but never could bring into your life, every love relationship. Everything, everything in the outside world can be taken away from you except one thing. And on an index card, which I think I actually still have in storage, the answer was except one thing. The freedom that we have to choose our response and reaction to it all. See, nobody can take that away from you. Right. That's the one thing you have that I have that as humans we have, right? Nobody but can always take with kindness that and love, way. you know, always with kindness hey. and love, even if you disagree with them, because that's where you stand in your power and you keep it there, yeah. you know, even if you disagree mm-hmm. with them because you're. Mm-hmm. And Keiko, is there a healing on this? Because I feel a healing here. I feel a healing. First of all, Carrie, um, you know, I was kind of tuning in with you when you came to the phone and my initial, uh, the, you know, kind of like an intuitive feeling was regardless, I can, I can feel that you're stressed level. I can feel the, uh, there is some, uh, the stress between you two, but one thing I have to say before I say anything else is that no one can make you feel inferior as you heard this before. No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. So you're in charge of your life so that you can, you know, take a lead of that, you know, allowing and not allowing her energy to affect you, you know, but 
Carrie, so I was kind of getting into into you a little bit of energy. So thank you. I'm a psychic, so I, that's kind of how I how I <laughs> you know connect. So um, uh, the Jane could not have said better uh, uh, the, as far as the, the advice goes. I totally agree, hundred percent agree with what Jane said, but I could not help but feeling, and that there is that your mother-in-law for somehow she still. She still wants your love. Mm-hmm. Maybe she does not know how mm-hmm. to get those love and affection from you. Mm-hmm. You know, some people, the, my lights just went off. Okay, so my spirit's saying maybe, uh, yes, but um, <laughs> <laughs> my lights just went off. Um, I just had this innate feeling that so you, your mother-in-law, I feel like a little bit of like a child-like, you know, uh, little bit of like a selfish, you know, childlike quality about her. And she may not know how to appropriately uh, receive your attention. And so just to keep you, don't close your heart completely on her, please. I know you say you don't want to have any relationship, any type of those. But what you happening is because once you say it, then yeah. you are putting the intention out to the universe Therefore, in a sense that you are kind of like self-sabotaging yourself in a way. You're making your life even more difficult by saying that. You don't need to be a best friend with her. But I feel that if you just keep your heart open and understand that perhaps that she may not know how to seek out, you know, appropriately your love and affection. Because Karen, mm. when she first came into the phone, I felt the kindness from you. Mm. I felt the patience from you. And then you feel hurt because of she's taking advantage of you. You know, so this is not an overnight fix. I understand. But just to know that she may not have, maybe she never learned when she was growing up how to express that kind of love. So I just want to do, you know, leave this, you know, with you. Um, and uh, But uh, that's kind of what I felt. And the other thing I'm feeling, too, as an intuitive, is that you are there in a relationship with her because you are her teacher. And so, you know, you have the ability to bring things to light to the relationship and to her um, in a very good way. So there's learning there for two souls and um, Keiko, uh, you know, tuned into that too. So I, you know, there's a purpose for your being connected and it's always for our souls to learn mm. to be our higher and better self. Yeah. This, it, and it's challenging. It, it, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and sometimes yeah, people push like, our buttons, but there's a reason for that, you mm-hmm. know? So go ahead, go ahead, Keiko. You were going to say something. I'm sorry, uh, uh, you know, the care. You it might be hard for you to really, uh, you know, kind of understand this in a way. Um, but I just, I just can't help it. But I have this feeling like your mother-in-law, she, she actually loves you. It's just like she doesn't know how to show it, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so that, and she maybe. It's it just something is telling me that I'm not sure if uh, she's getting a little bit of like a, a mental cognitive uh, uh, issue that might come into the surface now. Carrie, are you still there? Would you uh, oh, understand yeah. this? Okay, so that's what Completely. I'm getting here. Your mother-in-law is- Say that again? Like, oh, your mother-in-law is have some kind of, you know, mental cognitive. Uh, there is some problem now. She said cognitive, cognitive. cognitive. Yeah, it's an, yeah. And like a little bit of impairment, a little bit of forgetfulness or Mm. like started to lose a little bit of like a control. I'm sensing that coming, you know, from your mother-in-law. And then sometimes it's the, you know, that could also add to her, you know, somewhat in that uh, uh, behavior. She's Mm -hmm. scared. She's losing some control. And, and uh, so, it's not, it may not be all 100%. It's because of you or anything like that. But ultimately, what I was feeling is that, is that she wants to love you. She seems like not knowing how, you know, 
So uh, that's just uh, uh, the innate feeling that I got. So hope, uh, you know, you understand uh, uh, these. Carrie, did you take all that in? Most definitely. I really, really did. Um, It's a, it was really, really uh, nice to hear that. Um, it did ease off a little bit. It's, you know, when you can't trust somebody, but yet someone's telling you, you got to have a relationship with them. <laughs> it's kind of one of those, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> where it's like, I can't trust her. And it's like, uh, I, and as it is, I am very cautious of, you know, who I have around. And mm-hmm. then to be forced to have somebody around that you cannot trust is um, very disturbing. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess only time, Mm -hmm. you know, can help and heal, I guess. And you have control over... Really good point. Yeah, and you have control over, you know, what your thoughts are, how you react to them, and how much time you spend with someone, even if you're meant to help them and help each other grow and evolve to a a better, more compassionate, more understanding, more loving uh, person. Like we're all here to learn that our souls are eternal. And that's, you know, those are all the lessons that we, we choose to come back to learn. Yeah. But you do have control over how much time you spend with her and you can make the choice to manage that, which I would definitely recommend because, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it is um, causing you stress. And uh, that is something mm-hmm. that, you know, is in your highest and happiest benefit to manage that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Carrie, yeah. I know this is a lot, you know, you're probably going to want to listen to this back again um, later on today, it'll replay tonight. And I want to thank you for calling in, um, uh, what you're talking about is so very, very important to so many people listening. You become the spokesperson for those that just for whatever reason are not able to call in. So I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. You know, um, cause I, I woke up with a sudden thought this morning that, you know, those crazy thoughts that we're having, that we always have, you know, we try to throw us a curveball all the time. Uh-huh. But uh-huh. I have this crazy thought because I've been looking for this picture of my father who has passed away. And um, some crazy thought came to me, your mother-in-law took it. And I was like, what in the world? And uh-huh. after analyzing the last time she came to my house and when it disappeared, mm. it's around the same time. And I'm mm. like, oh, man, she took the picture. The mm. only picture I had. But do you know that for sure? I mean, no. really, without no. uh, unequivocally, without a doubt. So don't no. put that into your head because you don't know that for sure. Yep. 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 Don't know that for sure. What do you nope. think? Well, I, 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 I think for me, let, let me just do this. I want to encourage you to contact both Jane and Keiko directly because I know we've got about two minutes left here. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I think that would be great to follow this up with them. Cause I think that there's so much they can help you with. Um, and let's do it that way. If we could, how, how can Carrie get a hold of each of you, please? Uh, Carrie can get a hold of me through info at enlightened path.com. And before, um, Keiko uh, gives her contact information. I just want to make a real quick recommendation. Okay. You carry it, go online and go to the work.com. It's very good work from oh, Byron, yeah. Katie, Byron Katie that will help you address, you know, that these perceptions that are causing you pain. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then Keiko, oh. please give oh. your uh, yes, please. contact info. So, so Carrie, uh, please go to my website. That would be the easiest way to get a hold of me, which is the keikomedium.com. It's a K-E-I-K-O medium.com. And then through there, say contact Keiko, and uh, you can just type your questions, and uh, uh, I'll get back to you. Awesome. Awesome. Terry, thank, thank you. Thank, so you. Much. thank you so much. Wow. Jane, Keiko, thank you both for today. I think we've got a, less than a minute left, but I do need to ask you for your personal message 
each of you would like to leave us with today. Um, I'm going to just do one today to give Keiko some time for her affirmation, but magic is believing in yourself. And if you can do that, you can make anything happen. Mm, thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. So I just want to quickly share this affirmation that came to me during my meditation. It's all about how we live, how we allow our spirit guides and the guardians and universe to guide us. So if the listeners, if you like to close your eyes as I'm t- telling this, that would be the, maybe the best. So I will say this. I allow myself to pause and then ask for the divine spirit for guidance. I trust and surrender to the divine spirit and the universe. I allow all the signs and clues to come into my heart and soul space. I allow myself to notice, listen, see, and feel their divine signs and guidance. I allow myself to let go my fear and doubt. I allow myself to open my heart to receive their signs and loving messages and trust that they are for my highest good. You've been listening to Grow Your Soul Radio with Jane Matanga on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Thank you for tuning in and we hope you'll join us next week as Jane helps you unlock and reclaim the magic in your life. For more information on Jane Matanga or to listen to past shows, visit her website at enlightened-path.com or growyoursoulradio.com. And don't forget to ask Jane about her amazing intuitive life mastery session. See you next time.